Good afternoon, everybody. I may God bless you abundantly. I haven't been um, um, online for a very long time, but today I'm back after about three, four months, I believe. Well, it was last year in the month of August. Um, it's been moving into a new house and, uh, uh, you know, spending some time uh, with God to try and uh, get direction on uh, this ministry. And I thank God that he's really given me direction on um, what I ought to do here in uh, Texas um, and direction on exactly what it is that he wants me to do. So I praise and honor and glorify God for that, uh, that my mind is now clear. Um, I'm going to continue with this ministry of uh, uh, Facebook uh, Live, uh, YouTube, and also LinkedIn. Uh, for those of you who are on LinkedIn, uh, maybe you've seen me. Um, I do believe that God is doing uh, mighty things here in Texas, and uh, He's going to do mighty things in each and every one of us. And so I honor and glorify Him. Um, I'm going to pray before I start. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness, for your tender mercies. And uh, uh, once again, you giving me a chance to share your word and to uh, uplift and to edify the body of Christ. Um, here I am, Lord, send me. I'm your vessel, and I do believe that somebody is going to be changed. Lord, I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. And I come before your mercy seat, for your word declares uh, that uh, we should come to the throne of grace to find mercy and grace in our time of need. Lord, you died on the cross for each and every one of us. Lord. And it is the blood of Jesus Christ, your blood, my Lord, my God, that gives us victory in everything. Victory over sickness and disease, victory over infirmities, victory over poverty, death and luck, victory, most importantly, and the greatest treasure, salvation by your spirit, by your blood, we are alive. Once we accept you as our personal Lord and Savior, you are declares in John 7, 38, Whoever believes in you, Lord, that out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. I thank you, King of Kings, that your spirit is here with us. For where two or three are gathered in your name, you say, there you will be in our midst. And I thank you that you are in our midst. And that where two agree on anything, it shall be done. Lord, my God, let your will be done to whoever is going to be joining me today. I know some of them uh, have taken long without... Um, hearing from me, so maybe they thought that uh, this ministry was dead, but I am here to prophesy into your lives and also to speak to my life as well, that we shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord, as it is written in Psalms 118, verse 17. And I decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus, and outpowering of the Spirit of the living God, as it is written in Acts 2, 17, when God himself said in the last days, through his prophet, prophet Joel, now, having come to pass even in the day of Pentecost, it continues to power his spirit upon all flesh. That our daughters and sons shall prophesy. Young men shall have visions. Men shall have dreams. Men and women shall prophesy. Now, he was talking about his people. He spoke to Joel and he was talking to Joel to speak that in the last days, God will power out his spirit upon all flesh. And our daughters and sons shall prophesy. You are the daughters. You are the sons. I am also a son. And my daughters and my sons in my house. These are the last days that Christ promised, God promised, our Father promised. And fulfilled through Christ. Because when Christ died, then the Holy Spirit came. Praise the Son of the living God. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. And so, in these last days, it is happening. I've been to meetings in the last four months where I'm seeing a mighty move of God as has never been seen before. I am telling you, brother, sister... I am believing for a supernatural harvest of souls. I'm believing for a supernatural healings, miracles, signs, and wonders as has never been seen before. I'm talking about miracles out of this world. I mean, I'm, when I say out of this world, of course, all miracles are out of this world. But things that you've never seen before. God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, uh, I believe, verse, uh, verse 8. Praise God. But let's, let's start with that. Oh, Father, I thank you for your loving kindness. Because... The moment I come on, the Holy Spirit just takes charge. And I thank God for that. The water of God just comes out. 
eye has not seen, that's the word that I was looking for, ear has not heard, nor has it entered the heart of man, what God is about to do for those that love him. Listen to how powerful that word is. First Corinthians 2, um, uh, verse 9, I believe, yes. But as it is written, listen to this, but as it is written, I has, in fact, let me start from verse 6 so that you understand the, the genesis or the, the background to uh, this verse 9. Praise God. It is always important when you're reading the word uh, to, to go back a little behind so that you don't get things out of context. So you have to look at the context of why um, this scripture was quoted by Paul, the apostle, who was led by the Holy Spirit, praise God, speaking to the church in Corinth. And here he says this very word, says, however, and we're speaking to the church in Corinth that was partly fleshly and partly uh, walking according to the Spirit. And we all to, ought to walk according to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That's what the scripture says. Those that are led by the Spirit of the living God are the children of God. Listen to these words. It says, however, we speak wisdom among those who were mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, not the wisdom of this age, not the wisdom of this world. The wisdom of this world is nonsense. I'm not saying that, okay, it's totally nonsense. There are some good things out of the wisdom of the world. But you should depend, even when you're using the wisdom of this world, praise God, and wisdom of this world, I'm, the wisdom of this world, I'm not talking about the evil wisdom. I'm talking about the book knowledge. And I'm a doctor. I am an engineer. I, those things are good. And yes, they work up to a certain extent. Where they stop is where God starts. Praise God. If a doctor gives you a report that you're going to die, you have cancer, God starts from there. If you believe, as I do, for a miracle, a miraculous healing, because God is a healer, is Jehovah Rapha, that is where God starts. Praise God. How much so better if you believe God from the very beginning, even before you go to the doctor, miraculous healings, before you even visit a doctor. Praise God. You're healed supernaturally. Those are the things that are going to happen. Those are the things that are going to start to happen for every believer that believes in Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior and believes in the power of the risen Christ and believes in the power of the Spirit of the living God that we are given, sealed by the promise of the Spirit of the living God. Praise the Son of the living God. Listen to these words. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. So this wisdom only works for those who are mature. Praise God. We speak wisdom, not the wisdom of the world, but wisdom of God, the wisdom of the cross, which is foolishness to those that are in the world. And listen to what he says. Yet not the wisdom of this age, because the wisdom of this age looks at the things of the cross as, you know, foolishness. But that foolishness of the things of God, the people think, oh, they are foolish. What does it mean? for christ to die on the cross and that or he died on the cross and now i'm saved that is foolish to the wisdom of this age but to those that believe praise the son of the living god so he says however we speak wisdom among those who are mature yet not the wisdom of this age because the wisdom of this age is is sometimes it questions the things of god most of the time it questions science questions the things of god I've been to doctors who question everything. They want to science, they think about science and then calculating things and mathematicians as well. And, 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 and that's all good. Mathematics is good. But they question everything about God most of the time. And so not just the wisdom, but it's also the wisdom of this age, which is seen and unrighteous. They think, oh, going to the bar, going to this and doing this is much more fun that, than going to God sinning and practicing uh, uh, anything that is evil having fun in the world just as the world is today is better than the things of god here paul is speaking and saying yet not the wisdom of this age nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing so brother sister friend family do not look to the wisdom of this world do not look to the wisdom of this age Look to the wisdom of God, which comes through the power of the cross. The wisdom of the cross is the power. It is the power. It is where the power is. It is where victory is. This is where healing is. This is where supernatural deliverance is. It is where provision is. It is where protection is. The word of God declares in Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of a lamb, by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives even unto death. Praise the son of the living God. Do you know why the wisdom of Christ is better than the wisdom of this age. 
Because at the end of the day, in fact, I was just meditating on scripture today uh, in Matthew 24, verse 34 to 35, where Christ was speaking and saying that heaven and earth will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. Listen to that word. Heaven and earth will pass away. But his words shall remain, shall not pass away. Praise the Son of the living God. And so that is wisdom. In the wisdom of the cross is eternal life. In the wisdom of the cross is life itself, is, is purity. In the wisdom of the cross is cleansing from all sin and unrighteousness. In the wisdom of the cross is sanctification. In the wisdom of the cross is power. That is where the power is. Praise the Son of the living God. And that whoever believes in the wisdom of the cross, whoever believes in Christ Jesus there as their personal Lord and Savior, Christ said in John 7, 38, out of the innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. He was speaking of the spirit of the living God. Praise God. But listen to this word. It says in verse 7, we are still on 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2, verse, uh, uh, we've read verse 6. Praise God. It says, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, because the rulers of this age, and the rulers of this age here, uh, they mean uh, 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 the leaders of this world, the, the leaders of this world who are fooled by another spiritual realm of rulers, which Paul speaks of, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of darkness, principalities and powers, uh, the rulers of darkness in, in the heavenly realm, the second heavenly realm, uh, Satan himself with his demonic angels that have deceived this world. And so, if you understand uh, the provision of Christ, if you understand the protection that comes through the blood of Jesus Christ, if you understand that there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ, if you understand that salvation is in Christ alone and no other, you know that therein lies the wisdom. Praise the Son of the living God. He says in verse 7, listen to this. He says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained, this wisdom God ordained before the ages for our glory. Your glory, my glory. Praise the Son of the living God. How powerful is that? I'm not going to share with you another word. Uh, um, speaks to how we as believers win how do we become victorious in every situation and there's gonna be situations financial situations I'm going through so many situations myself but I, I, I have victory in Christ because of that word that is in me that God put inside of me I know that I'm already victorious in Christ that no matter what the, see the wisdom of God doesn't look at the current circumstances if you are a believer, you don't look at the current circumstances. You look at how big your God is. You look at a God who is above your circumstances. You look at a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. Oh, you can ever expect to imagine upon the power that works in us. I can the word of God in Ephesians 3.20. Praise the Son of God. See, that is the wisdom of God. And lo and behold, when you do believe, when you stand firm in the word of the Lord, when you look to God, you're going to see him transcend every situation, be it sickness and disease, poverty, dead and luck, be it death, be it anything that the enemy throws at you. Praise the son of the living God. Listen to this word. He says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Yes, it is a mystery to those that do not believe. And those mysteries can only be revealed, guess what? Through the power of the Spirit of the Living God, and that's why God left us the Spirit of the Living God to to uh, to, to 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 reveal the, the risen Christ, to reveal the truth, to reveal the power that is in Christ, to reveal the wisdom that comes through Christ through the cross, to reveal the mysteries of God. Praise the Son of the Living God. Oh, I I love this. It says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. And that wisdom, praise the Son of the living God, is now being revealed to the believer, praise the Son of the living God, who knows that power is in Christ. Power is through the Holy Spirit. Power is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Power and victory is in Christ, the Son of the living God. 
Blessed be to the mighty name of Jesus. So he says, but we speak the wisdom. For those of you who just joined us, praise God. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to, um, we're going to read up to wherever the Holy Spirit takes me. Praise God. But I just wanted to, uh, to, to let you know the things that are going to happen in these very last days. The very last days are days for people, men and women of God, who are fighters. Men and women of God who are ready to stand, even in the face of impossible circumstances. Knowing that we serve a mighty God who is a God of the impossible. Praise the Son of the living God. Verse 7 says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. That wisdom was hidden to this world before the, it was ordained before the ages, and it is hidden to this world, yes, in the world of, uh, that people live in, but it is not a mystery to you who are a believer. Praise God. God continues to reveal this on a daily basis, and he continues to reveal it to you so that you may use of God and by God, working in and through you, praise God, the Holy Spirit of God working in and through you, that you may bring the glory of God here on earth, praise God, that the will of the Lord be done here on earth, even as it is. Do you know why Christ prayed, or asked us to pray that we pray? Is that the will of the Lord be done here on earth, even as it is. Amen. Do you know why Christ constantly prayed that the will of the Father be done through him? Praise God. Not his will. Christ himself, the Son of God, praise God. Yes, he was a man of flesh, but yet the Son of God. He could have done anything as a son of God, praise God, but he prayed that the will of God, not his will, be done. Father, if it is possible, I would wish that my this cup be taken from me. Nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Praise the son of living God. And in, fact, in John 4, 34, he says that my meat or my food is to do the will of he that sent me. Praise the Son of the living God. See, that is so powerful. Our food, our meat should be to do the will of he that sent us. And who sent us? Our Father in heaven, who saw us before we were even formed in our mother's wombs. Blessed be to the mighty name of Jesus. In Jeremiah 1.5, God speaking of Jeremiah, who was despising himself, despising, oh, I am still a youth, I cannot talk. All the men and women of God, if you look at all the men and women that have been used by God, they were weak like we are. They despise themselves and their abilities. But if you look beyond your ability, praise the Son of the living, and that's the lesson. And know that you serve a mighty God of the impossible. And that even though you look weak as a vessel, yet in you is power. God has put a power in you. A vessel filled with the power of God. I'm going to share that word in a moment. But let us finish this. It says here, Listen to this. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, none of the rulers of this age, and he's talking about the few human beings who were uh, at the time of Christ, praise God. And yes, there's so many rulers of this age even to this day that persecute Christ, that persecute the men and women of God because they don't have the wisdom of God. He says here, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Praise the Son of the living God. Had they known, they would not have crucified Christ. But they didn't know. They were used by Satan. And in some people actually argue that, oh, they were used by God to bring to, the, to God the glory. Yeah, in one way or another, and another, you may argue that. If you, you are that person who's arguing that, but I'm here to tell you that even if Satan attacks you and you are a believer, ultimately, if you believe, God is glorified. Judas, think about Judas, even though it was purpose for Judas to kill Christ, okay, by God, that we may all be saved. And people argue that way, those people that argue that, oh, Judas was used by God to bring to pass what God wanted to, wanted to happen. But guess what? It was Satan, actually. It was Satan. But God, in his infinite wisdom, knew that even though Satan did what he did, praise the Son of the living God, God had a better plan, a foreordained plan, to save man who had fallen through Adam and Eve's sin. Praise the Son of the living God. Praise God. So ultimately, yes, it is Satan who did it. 
But God is in his infinite wisdom knew that even though Satan killed him, praise God, killed Jesus Christ, ultimately God would be glorified because in that death we would be saved. We would have salvation through Christ the Son of the living God. Praise God. And had Judas, I'm going to get to Judas now. Had Judas, praise the Son of the living God. Remember there are two people and you're going to see two differences. I always argue with uh, with, with, this, uh, with this, uh, these two people. Peter was much a sinner like Judas. Do you know the difference between Peter and Judas? Is that Peter repented. Judas did not repent. Judas instead was tortured by, again, of course it is Satan, the working of Satan, was tortured by his, his um, guilt and ended up um, um, hanging himself. Had Judas repented of his sin because Christ died for each and every one of us. The Lord's plans are not of evil. No, they are to prosper us and give us hope. Christ did not ordain that Judas be uh, taken to hell. No, it wasn't God's plan. Had Judas Iscariot, I'm talking about Judas Iscariot, repented of his sins, even of letting uh, uh, the, the, the Pharisees uh, lead Christ to his death, because that was a sin. That was uh, uh, Judas Iscariot uh, sin. It was a sin. But had he repented after the sin and had not his guilt taken over him, praise God, and ended up uh, uh, hanging himself, he would still have been saved. Now look at Peter. On the other hand, Peter, who denied Christ three times, what happened? Christ, because he repented, praise God, he repented of his sin. Because he repented of his sin, Christ forgave him. And in fact, if you notice, when he rose from the dead, Christ asked um, uh, Peter, do you love me? How many times did, did Christ ask Peter, do you love me? Three times. Do you love me? Feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Tend to my sheep. Three times. The very three times that... He denied Christ. And the very three times that Peter now was growing into love, the love of Christ, which means that God loves everybody, every sinner he died for. So the difference between Peter and Judas is that Peter repented. Judas did not repent. And so Christ wants each and every one of us to repent of our sins. He does not desire that any perish, fucking second Peter, because <laughs> Peter knows better because he was a sinner. Guess what he says in second Peter 3 verse 9. But let's read there very briefly. Second Peter 3, verse 9, it says that God is patient. He's long-suffering, patiently waiting for each and every one who has not yet repented of their sins. He does not desire that any perish. He does not desire that any perish, but that all come to full repentance. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let us look at Second Peter 3, verse 9. I'm trying to look uh, very fast here. But if you have your Bibles, please open in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, and you understand what I'm talking about. This is what he says. And this word was to those that um, were claiming that Christ was not going to return soon, or because they had been saying for all along that Christ was going to return, and uh, things that uh, um, had happened, and the, all these things that he prophesied, that there were going to be so many, um, so many earthquakes, and they had passed, but... Where was Christ? In fact, let's start from verse, verse 4. It says, let's, let me start from verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse, verse 3. It says, um, verse, verse 1. Let me start from verse 1. It says, Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Now, he's reminding even us, He's reminding us today, the Word of God is reminding us, the Holy Spirit is reminding us that Christ is not slow at what he promised. And that he's, he wants to stir our minds up, our pure minds, to know this truth, that he's coming back soon. Christ is coming back soon for a holy and unblemished church. Listen to what he says in verse 3. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come. Yes, scoffers will come. They are those who are even continue today to scoff at the return of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Listen to what they said at the time. And this is Peter saying that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts. 
people walking according to their own lusts, drinking and merrymaking and doing all kinds of things. In Uganda, it is so sad. We just lost so many lives. People were having fun, and I, I always pray to God. I say, Lord, I don't know whether they are in heaven or, I, and, and I pray, Lord, that you help each and every one that is alive today to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. That's why I do what I do, because we are in the last days. You don't know what's going to happen. Even if Christ had not returned today, you don't know how long you're going to live. My brother, my sister, my friend, so here he says, I'm saying, where is the promise? Those people that walk upon their, or, uh, according to their own lusts, says, I'm saying, where is the promise of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Those are the scoffers that are saying that, oh, look, everything is going on as it was. Where is your Christ? But you who is listening to these words, know that Christ is returning very soon. He's coming back soon for a holy and unblemished church. And that our walk, you and I, should be pure and holy, even as Christ was called us, is pure and holy. Listen to what he says in verse 5. For this they willfully forget, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out water and in the water, by which the word that then existed perished, being flooded with water. Praise God. The, the, the earth, the heaven and earth were framed by the word of God. And it is the same word of God that brought forth the floods, because that word came to Noah and everything that was ever created except those two that came into uh, Noah's ark were saved. In fact, only eight souls were saved of human beings. Noah and his wife, his three sons, and their wives. Those are the only human beings that survived. Now listen to this. Praise God. It says, But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word. Today, the heaven and earth is preserved by the word of God. Who promised to Noah? He promised to Noah that I'm not going to demolish this earth again by the floods. And that's why you see the rainbow. The rainbow reminds us of the promise. But listen to this today, scoffers continue to scoff against. Uh, the word of God and, and to scoff against the return of Jesus Christ is saying that where is your Christ that you say is returning but I'm here to tell you somebody Christ is returning soon he's coming back for a holy and unblemished church listen to what he says but beloved do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is a thousand years and a thousand years as one day so in other words for the two thousand years that Christ uh, has uh, since left this earth praise God when he died and rose from the dead, it's been 2,000 years. Praise God. It's only been two days in the kingdom. Because in, in heaven, the heaven, heaven is timeless. There is no time in heaven. So for you who think, sort of, oh, all these 2,000 years, we haven't seen Jesus Christ. He said he was returning in the last days. Which are the last days? In heaven, listen to this. According to the word of God. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now, that doesn't give you the right to go and sin him because, oh, in another day, maybe it could be another thousand years before he returns. So I might as well go and booze and drink and all that, which we saw in Uganda recently, which you see everywhere in the world. People are perishing because of lack of knowledge, because they do not know the truth. You cannot live, I've always used this, you cannot live beyond 120 years. That is the limit that anybody can live. Even today, in some countries, people don't live beyond 60 years. People don't believe beyond 100 years, beyond, in some countries, people, even here in America, they don't live beyond 90 years, some of them. We just lost President Bush, G.W. Bush, 41, at 94 years. So you don't know when you're going to die. You and I don't know. We don't know. And so we must live each day here on earth as though Christ, we are going to return anytime. In fact, this is the Christ of Peter's message. Listen to what he says in verse 8, which I was looking for. Verse 9. It says, the Lord is not slack, not slack concerning his promise. He's not slow concerning his promise. As some count slackness, as some count slowness. Some count slowness because of time, because of human-made time. God is not limited by time. God is not limited by circumstances in, the, in, the, in our world, in our natural world, because it's supernatural. It can happen super fast that Christ returns. It can happen anytime because God is God. 
Only God knows when Christ will return. And he's coming back for a holy and unblemished church. The question is, you and I, are we ready when he returns? Are we pure and holy? Even as he has called us to be pure and holy. Listen to this. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering. In other words, he's patient. Long-suffering suffer, means patient, patiently waiting for that person to come to, to salvation, for, for you and I to, to be purified, for you and I to be used by God to bring others to Christ, for you and I to be sanctified by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why Christ said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'll leave you a comfort, a counselor, a sanctifier. So that when Christ returns, as Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, the God of peace himself sanctifying us, that we may be found blameless in body, soul, and spirit. Listen to this. He's not, he's, he's not slack. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Yes, he promised he will return. And he's coming back soon. As some count slackness. If, if you think, oh, it's low in returning, then you're not... A, be a believer. As a believer, you should live as though Christ were to return. And I'm speaking to some people who, who, who may not be believers. If you're not yet a believer, Christ is saying, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you'll be saved. We are in the last days. I'm going to speak to that in a moment. Listen to this. He says, but he's long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. God does not desire that any perish. But that all should come to repentance. That we should all come to repentance. Uh, repentance means you turn from your old ways. Praise God. Turn from your drunkenness. Stay away from drunkenness. Per, uh, perversion. Uh, pornography. Masturbation. Everything. Drunkenness. Everything. Say not everything. Hatred. Even in your heart. Praise God. Perversion of any sort. Pornography. Uh, uh, LGBT too. Things of, of, of homosexuality. Listen to this. Christ said that in, 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 somewhere in Matthew 24. Praise God. But as the days of Noah, just as the days of Noah and the days of Lot, which is the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, where Lot was in the, the city of Sodom and, and Gomorrah, where we are crushed, we are burned down because of the scene of that city. But Christ himself saying that as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, of Lot, so shall it be when he returns. And so you begin to understand that when you see the things that we are seeing right now, LGBT2, and you see adultery and fornication and drunkenness and all these other things that are happening right now, just know that Christ is about to return. And I'm speaking to somebody today. Please accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you'll be saved. It is these days. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today. To accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you'll be saved. Listen to verse 10. Verse 10 says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. If you are a believer, it will not take you by surprise. But if you are not a believer, it will take you by surprise. But Paul speaks about it in uh, somewhere in Second uh, Second Thessalonians chapter two. Praise God! That if you are a believer, this day will not take you by surprise. But those who are not believers, as it was in the days of Lot, as it was in the days of Noah, they will be taken by surprise. Brethren, friend, family, let this day not take you by surprise. Please come to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that when he returns, you are saved. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away. Listen to this. The heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, the things that you see, the world that you see, the, 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 the houses, the mansions that people are yearning after, the silver and gold that people are yearning after, the cars and everything, they're going to perish. Satan and the, the demonic angels, they're all going to perish. So don't let even Satan fool you. It's going to perish. But if you're listening to what the Spirit of God is saying, Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you will be saved. He says, therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? 
So if these things are going to be dissolved, what manner of person ought we to be as born again believers? And if you're not yet born again, please do accept Jesus Christ as personal Lord and say that you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he will teach you these things, praise God. And I believe that he's speaking to you today. And what manner of conduct ought we to be? Praise God. In holy conduct and godliness. Knowing that everything is going to pass. Everything. Christ said in Matthew, again, this is speaking to what Christ himself said. And heaven and earth will pass away. Matthew 24, 34 to 35. Heaven and earth will pass away. But his words shall remain. Praise God. He said, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God. Because of which the heavens will be dissolved. Being on fire and the elements will melt with fire and heat. All this will be melted. Everything. But if you are a believer, praise the Son of God. Guess what is going to happen? You are not going to be melted. Because you know why? If you are a believer, you go straight to heaven. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of righteousness is eternal life through Christ, the Son of the living God. It is this that Christ said that we should seek gold that has been tested by fire. That gold, you, you seek it right now by accepting him as your personal Lord and Savior. Seek gold that has been tested by fire that you may be rich. From who? From Christ himself, praise the Son of the living God. He should be our number one treasure. He is our number one treasure. If you're a believer, you know what I'm talking about. That when this fire comes, praise God, you'll be straight gold. The fire cannot touch you. Praise God. In fact, that fire is going to come, praise God, to those that are already dead who are not in Christ. The dead who are in Christ, you know, as if you die before your time and you're in Christ, and you are alive in Christ, when Christ returns, you'll meet, up, meet him up in the air. But everything else will be burnt down. That's why Christ says that we should seek gold that's been tested by fire from him. And that fire the testing of the fire starts right now we are living in a world that is evil and perverse we live in a, a tempting world a world that has all this gold and silver that is yes looks good to the eye all these are the things and fun and old things and that are worldly that look good to the eye but yet they're evil guess what from who from the mother of harlots from that 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 Babylon the Great, the mother of Hallows, that Christ again in the book of Revelation reveals to us that that mother of Hallows is a city, is a place that is sitting upon nations that wants people to, to, be, to be, to die, to go to hell. The spirit of the Antichrist, that mother of Hallows, a city that rides the beast. And I'm warning somebody today in the mighty name of Jesus that you do not fall to the lies of the devil. Do not Fall to the lies of that spirit of religion, the spirit of evil, the spirit of antichrist, the spirit of wildness, the spirit of the age. It is called in elsewhere in the Bible. But stand firm on the word of the Lord. For Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. There is no other. And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Not loving our lives even unto death. That no matter what happens, even if it means death, you must preach the gospel, the truth, and stand firm. Do not worship the beast. Do not worship anything that is anti-Christ, but Christ only, and you will be saved. Listen to these words. It says, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of our God, the day of God. And that day is coming soon, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fire and heat. So anything that is not of God will melt with fire and heat. But if you be so gold that has been tested by fire, you will not melt. Praise God. As Christ says, if you seek his white garments, which is through the blood of Jesus Christ, his blood that was shed for each and every one of us, you'll be washed away. Your sins will be washed away. Praise God. And you'll be purified by his blood. And those are the white garments. His white garments come through the blood. The blood that was shed for each and every one of us. It purifies us and cleanses us, washes us sins away, that we are as white as snow. And we're as white as wool. Praise God. God does not look to any sin. He forgives and forgets all our transgressions, our sins and transgressions because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because of what Christ did on the cross for each and every one of us. Praise God. And he says, seek I serve that 
you may see, praise God. These things you see, the, your, the eyes of your understanding will be opened when you come to Christ, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Listen to this in verse 13 says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. There is going to be a new heaven and a new earth that is going to be created for those that are believers. The glory in that new heaven and new earth, you can read it in Revelation 22. Oh my God, it is going to be like nothing ever seen on this earth below. On this earth, praise God. On this earth that we live in, praise God. The heaven and earth that is going to be recreated by God for those that believe and those that dwell therein is going to be filled with the glory. We will not need the sun, we will not need the moon, the word of God declares, but the glory of God will light us. It will light us, it will give us light, praise God. We will be in that glory, praise the son of a living God. That is the scripture. 14, it says, how do you attain that? It says, therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace. Be diligent to be found by him. By who? By Christ when he returns. In peace, without spot and blemish. Praise God. Now I'm going to go to back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Praise God. About have about 20 minutes. Uh, verse 9. In fact, uh, we stopped at verse 8. Praise God. This is what he says. Which none of the rulers of this age, the rulers of this age as uh, the, the earthly rulers, the earthly kings that give their power to the devil that submit to the devil. But you who are believer, do not submit to the Antichrist that I just mentioned. Submit yourself to God. Submit your heart to Christ. Submit everything of yours. Present your body as a living sacrifice, all and accept of the Lord. Praise God. That you may know that which is a reasonable service. And do not be conformed, Paul says in Romans 12, 1 to 2. Let us not be conformed to this world because this world is evil. But let us be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Praise God. That we may know that which is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And that comes through reading the word of God. Standing firm on the word of God. And submitting the Holy Spirit. Because the word of God and the spirit of God are inseparable. The word of God elsewhere in the Bible says the sword of the spirit. It is living. It is even sharper than any two-edged sword. The earthly two-edged sword is what he's talking about. Praise the Son of the living God. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to the division of soul and spirit. Born and marrow, thoughts and intents of the heart. Praise God. That's how God works in our hearts and brings us to salvation, purifies us by the power of his word, the spirit of God himself working in and through us. Praise the son of the living God. Listen to what he says in verse 9. This is so powerful. In fact, verse 8 says, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The Lord of glory is who is going to give us the crown of glory when we finish this battle, when we finish this race that is set before us in faith, by grace through faith, and win to the very end. What are we going to wear? We're going to wear a crown of glory that comes from Christ, from Christ himself. Praise God. Listen to what he says in verse 9. But as it is written, even in these days, in these days, he says, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Praise God. So if you love him in these days, stand firm on this word. Yes, the glory of God, we've seen the glory of God. I've been to places, meetings where there's the glory of God, visible manifestation of God. I mean, you feel the presence of the Spirit of God. Your eyes are moving by the power of the Spirit of a living God. You're worshiping God with angels. It can't happen. Christ said, pray that the will of the Lord be done here and even as it is in heaven. I mean, I'm talking about miracles, people, fingers growing. They happen even today. And in these last days, it is going to happen. But there is even a greater glory where there won't be any tears when Christ returns for you and I, praise God. But we must start now, praise God. So he says, I has not seen. How do you start? By accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And then out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water, even as the Spirit of God himself is using me to, to flow with the rivers of living water. It is not me doing this. It is the Holy Spirit using me. I cannot take the glory of God. I cannot take the glory of God. It is God. It is by the mercy of God, not because of what I have, who I am, I'm weak in my in and of myself, but yet in me there is power. And that power is because of what Christ has done in and through me, through his spirit. Praise God, through the spirit of the living God. Listen to this. So I has not seen, nor has he entered the heart of man, have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Do you love him? How do you know that you love him? 
by accepting him as your personal Lord and Savior and letting him use you in mighty ways, regardless of your circumstances. Praise God. You lay down your life for others as he laid down for each and every one of us. Serve him. Praise God. And you will see the glory of God. Blessed be to the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to take you to 2 Corinthians 3. And then after that, uh, I'm going to take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I love this scripture. Praise the Son of the living God. I, I quote it to myself all the time. Listen to what it says. Now the Lord is the Spirit. So the Lord and the Spirit, they are inseparable. Praise God. For God is Spirit. And in these last days, praise God, watch out. If you are a worshiper, it says in John 4, 20 24, that the time has come for those, that, for those that worship to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Praise God. Praise God. For God is spirit and he desires that we, re, we worship him as such. And how do you worship him in spirit and truth? By letting the spirit totally take over. In preaching and praying, you need the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. Praise God. There is total freedom. There is deliverance. Deliverance through the word. Deliverance through his glory. Deliverance through all kinds of... The prophetic, the prophets of God that speak into our lives, apostles of God that are planting churches, the glory of God and liberty comes through Christ the Son of Living God, through the fivefold ministry, through men and women of God that have been anointed by Him to stand firm in the word of the Lord and bring deliverance to His people. Praise God. Allowing them to be used as vessels that His people may be delivered from the bondage of slavery to sin and unrighteousness, from the bondage of poverty, dead and lack, from the bondage. Of sickness and disease regardless of, of your situation i may be going through the same situation but guess what i stand firm and know that because god said it it is true and as i minister god is ministering to me i am ministering to god i'm ministering to god in the sense that i am looking to him as my source praise god worshiping him glorifying him with my mouth with my heart with my everything that he has given me think about it for a minute there are people who cannot talk, who cannot speak. There are people who are blind. There are people who are with vocal cords. They, they, they can't talk. They, they, they have yeah, vents. My wife is a nurse. They have vents. They have, they have uh, uh, what they call them, things that, that come to, they, put, they, have to they have to eat through their, their throat. So many things. Little babies from little babies. But God is faithful. He has given you a voice. He has given you eyes. He has given you health. And you can't even accept him as your personal Lord and say, glorify him for that. If you are a born again believer, you cannot even preach the gospel. So glorify him with everything that God, he has given you. Praise God. I glorify him with what he has given me. Praise the Son of the living God. I give him honor and glory for saving me because I was in the murray pits of clay. I was a drunkard. I was so many things that I'm ashamed to talk about. But in his infinite wisdom, going back to his wisdom, in his mercy, in his loving kindness, he saved me. And he continues to do a work in me, in my imperfectness. He's the pioneer and perfect of my faith. And I want you to listen to this word and I pray that he touches you today in the name of Jesus. So listen to what he says. That now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In verse 18, listen to what he says. But we all, now as every believer, and even those that are not yet believers today you're listening to this word praise god and i believe that god is already doing a work in you listen to what he says but we all with unveiled face in other words christ is moving the veils off of our faces he did that for us over two thousand years ago when he died on the cross that the veil which was in the temple according to the old covenant would be removed in the spirit praise god in fact it said that the that that veil broke down and, and now signifying that we can now come to the holy of holies but not the physical holy of holies in the realm of the spirit we no longer walk and call the curse of the law of sin and death but the word of god declares when you come to christ there's no condemnation there's no condemnation for them that are in christ jesus because we no longer walk upon the curse of the law of sin and death but on the law of the spirit so the law is intact but it is by the spirit of god praise god so in the realm of the spirit you may not see things happening, but God is doing certain things. He did it for us over 2,000 years ago, and he made it possible on that cross that whoever accepts him as their personal Lord and Savior, out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Praise God. And that's why my ministry is called the rivers of living water, because the source of the rivers of living water is Christ himself. Praise God. 
And that is the Spirit of God himself working in and through us. A part, the person of the Holy Spirit, we promise, I'll not leave you as often as I'll leave you a comforter, a counselor. Praise the Son of the living God. And so here he says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Praise God. So it is the Holy Spirit working in and through us on account of what Jesus Christ did on the cross that helps us to, as all these veils are being removed and the truth is being revealed, the revelation of Christ on a daily basis and what he has purposed for each and every one of us are according to the word of God here in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. But we all with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, we look at ourselves not as destitute, not as poor, not as lost, but in Christ, we are found in Christ. We are continuously transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit into the very image of Christ himself. That when he returns, he finds us blameless in body, soul, and spirit. This is what he says. He says, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, as being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. In other words, if you're in Christ, it is impossible. If you're in Christ, you're praying, you're reading the word of God, it is impossible for you to be stagnant unless you are not believe, a believer. If you are in Christ, if you pray fast, do all the things that God has called you to do, no matter what the circumstances, don't look at your circumstances. The circumstances are going to change. Praise God. You are moving from glory to glory. In other words, you're moving from one strength to another in Christ. Praise God. So he says, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. It is the spirit of God who does the work. Praise the son of living. How beautiful is that? Because it is Christ who said, I'm not going to leave you as often as I'll leave you a covenant counselor. And he knew that in this world where there's so many temptations, evil, perversion, trials and tribulations, you're not going to be able to manage. You and I are not able to manage. It is only the Holy Spirit can help us overcome. Praise the son of the living God. Second Corinthians. I'm going to take you to second Corinthians right there where you are. Verse 7. And so Paul here, led by the Spirit of the living God, begins to unveil. How, what is this power? How do we move from glory to glory? Even when there's chaos, there's a lot of things going on. There's killing and dying. And I just shared a, a, the testimony of how people died. They were having fun and everything. And it's so easy for you to be disheartened. But I'm here to strengthen somebody. And even though those things are happening, we who are alive right now, it is not too late for us to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And I was reading a testimony of one uh, um, lady who was on there, a uh, singer, uh, Irene Namobiru. I think uh, for those of you who are from Uganda, you know, you know who I'm talking about. That lady says that as the, 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 the boat drowned, this is an incident of a boat that drowned in the lake. They were having fun. They were drinking. They were merrymaking and all that. And this boat, which was ramshackled, I don't know why in the hell, you know, it was there, but well, it was hell itself that brought it there. <laughs> it was there. Why? Why was it there? It's Satan. Satan himself planning that people may die. That is Satan for you. Satan working to kill people. But Christ doesn't want anybody to perish. He does not desire that any perish, but that we come to full repentance. Each and every one of us. For all those of us who are here, who are still alive. Praise God. And so she say, shared the, 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 the story that oh, people were crying, others were uh, repenting right there in the, in the, in the ocean, in the, in the lake. It's a big lake. They were repenting. They say, forgive us, forgive us, repenting. And she was saying, amen, amen. And God had warned her through so many events not to go on that boat. See, today, even today, God is warning each and every one of us today not to go to anything that is evil. Not to perish, but come to full repentance. Like in John 3, 16, what I could do declares that for God so loved the world that, uh, that, oh, thank you, Jesus. John 3, verse 16. Let's read that, that, that scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God's plan is that not any perish. Don't ever, anybody ever let you think that God's plan is that you perish. God's plan is not that we perish, but that we should have everlasting life. That's why he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for things of our sins. 
who wants us to perish it is satan it is hell it is the devil himself who came by to steal kill and destroy but jesus christ came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly praise god and so this is what he says for god so loved the word that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish should not perish but have everlasting life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world he did not send his son to condemn the world but that the word through him might be saved that we all might be saved praise god he who believes in him is not condemned if you believe in christ right now you're not condemned but he who does not believe is condemned already if you do not believe in christ you are already condemned so in other words if you hear these words you do not believe in jesus christ as your personal lord and savior you're condemned because you're denying christ himself he said because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of god and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil so if you love darkness rather than light if you love to do the evil uh, walk according to this evil and perverse generation and this world rather than be born again this is what he's saying loving darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil because you prefer evil then you will be condemned but for every it says for everyone practicing it says for everyone practicing evil has the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed but he who does truth if you do truth if you believe in the truth and do the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in god praise god i'm going to take you first john 1 7 very quickly if you have your bibles first john 1 7 i have about four minutes and i'll close in a minute uh, in uh, four minutes first john 1 7 and this is the beauty of the word of God because it speaks of these things. And this the Christ said that the words that I speak to you are life and they are spirit. Why did he say that they are life and they are spirit? Because it's the spirit of God himself that is speaking to us of these things. And it is the truth. And it is the truth because Christ is the only way, the truth and life. The spirit of God is the spirit of truth. And our God is a God of the truth. Praise God. And I trust that these words that you've just heard are going to set you free. John 8, 32, the word of God declares, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. John 8, 36. Praise God. So open your Bibles in First John chapter 1, verse 7. This is what he says. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, who is in the light? God is in the light. God is light. Praise God. If we walk in the light, if we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, listen to this. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Praise God. No sin that he cannot cleanse if you repent. Praise God. If you do something out of, uh, uh, um, out of uh, ignorance, you are forgiven. If you do it knowingly, in other words, you blaspheme the Lord, you know it's the Spirit of God and you blaspheme the Spirit of God. That is a sin. It's an unpardonable, unpardonable sin. But if you know the truth and you know it, you do it, praise God. He, he says, if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, because that's that's the beginning of doing uh, um, uh, doing uh, the truth. Praise God. Accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, and you'll be saved. He says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Praise God. Now, those words are for you and I, for you and I, myself inclusive. When I sin, I always come to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, forgive me for everything that I've said, done, or thought that has not glorified your name. I pray that you purify me with the blood of Jesus Christ. Simple. And he remembers those sins no more. Your transgressions no more. That's how faithful our God is. Listen to what he says in Acts 2, 17. I'm going to close to the, uh, with this scripture. Praise God. Not to, uh, uh, um, not to make you uh, uh, anxious, because we're not supposed to be anxious, yet we are supposed to tell the truth so that people may not perish. Hosea 4, 6, Christ said, my, uh, um, um, God said, my people are dying because of lack of knowledge. And yes, Christ, because Christ is the Alpha and Omega. He's Christ. Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit are one. Praise God. So sometimes I say Christ, but what I mean is that God, because Christ is the Son of God, praise God, and our Father and the Holy Spirit are one. Say it. My people are dying because of lack of knowledge. And some have rejected the knowledge. So it is possible for some people to just reject the knowledge. Others lack it because they have not heard the truth of the message. They have not had a, a known uh, the truth. Praise God. They have not known the truth. But if we preach that truth, praise the Son of the living God, they will know the truth and that truth shall set them free. Praise God. That's why we preach the gospel. Praise God. Acts 2, 17, and this is for you who is a believer. And you who is not yet a believer, this is the promise by God. 
that in the last days, yes, we're living in the last days. We talked about the last days in which Christ is about to return. But for those that are believers, praise God, there's a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit in these last days. And if you're open to the Spirit of God, He's going to use you in mighty ways. You're going to do mighty things. You're going to do mighty exploits of God. God Christ said in John 14, 12 to 14, that the things that I do when I was still here on earth, He said, the things that I do, you do you'll be able to do even more when you believe. Praise God. That is Jesus Christ himself. And here he says in Acts 2, 17. Praise God. And it shall come to pass. And by the way, this is a quotation from Joel 2, 28 to 32. A Joel, a great man of God, a prophet of God, who was used by God to prophesy of the things that were to come. And those things came to pass when the Holy Spirit came upon the men and women of God that were gathered in the upper room where Christ told them to gather. Praise the Son of the living God. And the, on that day, the day of Pentecost, there was a mighty outpouring of the Spirit of the living God. And people spoke in tongues. And those that were outside, they could understand, even though they were speaking in a strange tongue from heaven, they could understand the words that were being spoken in their own language. That is how powerful our God is. And those things he continues to do. Praise God. I'm telling you because I didn't, never believed in, in speaking in tongues when I was a Catholic. I was religious. But when I became born again, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit came upon me and I was speaking tongues. I don't know how God does it, but I know that it is God. Praise the Son of a living God. I cannot deny it. And here I am preaching the gospel. I, I, and I didn't know. I didn't know then. But I accepted him as my personal Lord and Savior. And he, I saw this apparent of the Spirit of the living God come inside of me. And, and then now I'm preaching the things of God. And he can use you. Praise the Son of the living God. Blessed be to the mighty name of Jesus. Listen to this. He says in these last days. So the same apparent of the Spirit of the living God is still happening even today. He just saw that the last days are more than, than just our physical calendar days that we think of. In heaven, a thousand years are like a day and a day like a thousand years. So here, Paul, praise the Son of the living God. I mean, in Acts uh, chapter 2, praise God. And Paul has been used many, many times over there because he was one of the people that persecuted the church, praise God. In one way or another, I feel like a, a, a Paul, who was formerly sold because... I did not believe in these things, but now I do, and I'm preaching them. Praise God. Praise the Son of living God. How powerful is that? The wisdom of God. The infinite wisdom of God. That he puts his spirit in you, that you know, that I know, that I know, that know, that know, that God sent his only begotten son, who died for us. And know that there is the power of the Holy Spirit that is available to each and every one of us. Listen to this. It says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. Says God that I will power out of my spirit on all flesh. Praise God. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will power out of my spirit. Out of my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. That is your promise and my promise. I will show wonders in heaven above, signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke, and the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And what is the great and awesome day of the Lord before these things happen? It is the coming back of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Are you ready for this outpowering? Are you ready now so that when He returns, you have that outpowering already? That you are the wise virgin who has, in Matthew 25, talks about the wise virgin, praise God. That oil, that anointing in you, that is flowing, that you're the sort of light of what that he's called you to be. This is the promise for you and I. And he says, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now I'm going to close. Uh, um, sorry, the Holy Spirit reminded me. I was going to talk about 2 Corinthians 4. The enemy was trying to steal that, but I'm going to give it to you. So that you know what power do you have as a born-again believer. What happens even in the hardest circumstances. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What is that treasure? The treasure in heaven. Christ himself working in and through us. The Holy Spirit of God working in and through us. God using us in mighty ways. Even beyond circumstances that are surrounding us. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. The excellence be of God and not of us. 
the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Listen to verse 8. It says, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. Yes, even though you're going, and I'm talking to somebody who may be going through some kind of circumstance, situation, financial, sickness, and disease, that you may be going through that. But if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or if you are a believer already, know that that is not the end. It is not your end. God is with you. He will get you through. There is supernatural healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. There's a power of God to bring healing to your bodies, souls, and spirits. It says, we have had praise on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted. And for those of you who are being persecuted because of the kingdom of God, because of preaching the gospel, because of doing everything that you've known to do right in according to the word of God, and yet you continue to go through situations. And I've seen that in my life. He's saying, persecuted, but not forsaken. Christ has not yet forsaken. He said in Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 2, that he will not let us be forsaken, even though the fires come, everything that the devil throws at you, he will never let the fire devour you and I. He will never let the floods overtake us. He will uphold us by our right hand. Walk with us in the fire, even as he walked with Abednego, Shadrach, and Meshach. Even as he got Daniel out of the lion's den, he will get you out in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Son of Living God. So he says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We have had praise on every side and yet not crushed. We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Christ suffered on the cross. Yes, see, it's not that the circumstance was not there. They beat him up. He, he took the stripes for you and I. But guess what? At the end of the day, when he was nailed on that cross and was he died on the cross for you, your sin, your sins and my sins, and was buried, he rose from the dead on the third day. After that, he rose to heaven, and now he has many crowns. He's glorified. He's glorified in heaven, and every knee shall bow down. You know why he has so many crowns? He won those crowns for you and I. Revelation says that he is riding the white horse and he has many crowns. Many crowns. Why does he have many crowns? I asked the Holy Spirit, why does he have so many crowns? Because one of those crowns is for you and I. Each and every one of those crowns were for everybody and that is ready to fight a good fight of faith to run as paul says this race that is set before us that at the end of the day we will wear the crown of glory blessed be to the mighty name of jesus so he says for we who live are always delivered to death for jesus's sake that the life of jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh so then death is working in us but life in you and since we have the same spirit of faith Yes, the spirit of faith, according to what is written. I believed and therefore I spoke. Paul was speaking to the church in Corinth. And I believe today, and I'm speaking the same words to you and I, each and every one of us. Praise God. We must stand firm on the word of the Lord. Proclaim the gospel of Christ. Walk in holiness and purity and his righteousness. Look forward to his return. Because he's coming back for a holy and unblemished church. He's saying, knowing in verse 14, that he who raised up the Lord Jesus Christ will also raise up, raise us up with Jesus and will present, will present us with you. Paul was speaking to the church in Corinth. So all of us will be presented to God. We'll be presented to God, holy and unblemished. If we stand firm, if we call upon Jesus, if we submit to the Holy Spirit, to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, and says, for all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. All this is to the glory of God. Christ did what he did for the glory of his Father in heaven. We must do everything that we do here on earth for the glory, for the honor and glory of God, our Father in Christ Jesus. Praise the Son of the living God. With those words, may God bless you abundantly. I'm going to pray for a minute. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everybody that has just joined today. Lord, I honor and glorify you, and I pray for everybody that is sick, anybody that has any kind of struggles that they're going through, Lord. 
I pray in the name of Jesus that you bring healing to their bodies, souls, and spirits. Their mother, bodies, souls, and spirits. In the realm of the spirit, anybody that does not yet accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, Lord. But your word declares in John 3, 3, that unless one is born of water and spirit, they cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Lord, I pray for a salvation of souls. Even as I speak in the name of Jesus, you said Matthew 9, 37, 38, the harvest is plentiful, but the harvesters are few. And that we only need to pray to the Lord of the harvest, merciful God and having God. I pray to you, King of Kings, that souls may be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for purity of heart, for blessed are those with a pure heart, for they shall see God. Lord, I pray that you purify us, sanctify us, that when you return, you find us blameless in body, soul, and spirit, myself inclusive. Most high God, we submit to you. I submit my heart to you. I pray that everybody submits their hearts to you, Lord my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Forgive us for everything we say down or thought that does not glorify your name. We ask you for the forgiveness of the sins of this entire world. Anything that is say down or thought that is does not glorify your name in the past and in the present, Lord, we pray that you forgive each and every one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray you purify us with your precious blood, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I pray you bring supernatural healing. I'm decreeing in Acts 17, our power of the Spirit of the living God, which you just gave us in your word in Acts 17, prophesied by the great man of God in Job 2.28. And our power of the Spirit of the living God over each and every one across all nations, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let your will be done here on earth. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, he said, whatsoever thing we bind on earth, we'll be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thing we loosen here on earth, we'll be loosened in heaven. I loosen ministering angels, angels of fire, angels of strength from heaven. Angel Michael, all the angels that you purpose for each and every one on earth, Lord, to do that which you purpose for them to do on the behalf of each and every one of us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, my God, if there's anybody that's going through any kind of financial persecu persecution as I'm going through, if they're going through any kind of trials and tribulations, Lord, only you can intervene. You know? I decree a divine intervention. My Lord, my God. Acceleration in everything. If there's anybody who's been suffering with pornography, masturbation, anything that is anti-God, promiscuity, adultery, fornication, anything that is anti-God, homosexuality, all those things you said in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10, if anybody practices such things, they will not make it to the kingdom of heaven. Lord, I pray that you deliver each and every one of them, myself inclusive, from anything, Lord, any lies in my heart. Because it is a matter of the heart, Lord. Any lies in my heart. And in an each and every one that is listening at the sound of my voice, Lord. I pray that you bring, you bring purity, holiness, your purity, Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, have your way in us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. And everybody say, Amen. May God bless you abundantly. And we will continue tomorrow. Once again, uh, uh, welcome you back, whoever's just joined me today. Tomorrow we'll continue. It's been about um, kind of a hiatus um, of about three, four months. But God is going to do mighty things. God bless you abundantly.